Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be talking about vitamin deficiencies for sciatica, carpal tunnel, tarsal tunnel, and peripheral neuropathy. Here in this clinic we actually treat these sciatic top pains with spinal decompression, nutrition, and then we also treat peripheral neuropathy, especially if you have diabetes, if you've had chemo radiation, or chronic alcoholism are the main causes of those. But today I want to dive into the specific vitamin deficiencies that we see with people suffering from these conditions. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps my channel and helps get this message out to people who may be struggling with these issues. And we also have some free resources below if you want to learn more about our clinic, what we can do to help, and then just to learn more about how you can take control of your health and how we can assist you in that. Now, let's get into the topic for today. So, vitamin deficiencies can be very common in sciatica and carpal tunnel. Why is this? Most of it is because Americans today are eating such a poor diet that they're not getting the amounts of vitamin D, B12, and B6 that they need for proper inflammation control, nerve function, and immune system function. Autoimmune, condi autoimmune conditions are on the rise, and these supplements help with those conditions in by keeping the immune system in check. Now, when we specifically talk about sciatica, let's talk about what sciatica is, because I see a lot of misdiagnosis with sciatica. Sciatica is a pain that goes down the back of the leg through the buttocks and all the way to the foot. For it to be a true sciatica, the pain must go to the foot because the sciatic nerve innervates all of the muscles in the posterior part of the leg to, all the way down to the foot. If it is stopping at the knee, that is an indication that it is a facet imbrication or jamming of the joints in your back. I see a lot of doctors and I see a lot of patients thinking that they have sciatica when it's actually a facet imbrication. And maybe they get some relief or they don't get any relief from certain therapies. And that's the reason why, because maybe they're doing massage on the sciatic nerve or maybe they're doing a Theragun, maybe they're doing a bunch of different things but it's not fixing the true cause of the problem. And this is why diagnosing is so important because you need to know that there are differences between a true sciatica, a facet imbrication, uh, aggravation of the clunial nerves in, in the back, whether it's just typical back pain, whether it's a pulled muscle, all of these have different treatment and therapies that need to be applied in order to fix them. So. Let, since we've defined sciatica, let's define carpal tunnel. So carpal tunnel is where the ligaments run through this tunnel in your forearm formed by the ligaments. And what happens, it becomes inflamed a lot of the times and people get wrist pain. This can look like if you have a desk job and you're typing a lot, or if you're in a flex wrist position for the majority of the day, it could even look like coming from sports. There are multiple reasons that carpal tunnel happens. and there is also tarsal tunnel, which is in the foot. So one of the things that we see in the office is some people have neuropathy, but some people also have carpal tunnel or they have tarsal tunnel syndrome. And really the treatments for those are very similar, but you can do different therapies in order to reverse them or treat them specifically, especially if you get a thorough exam and you find out is it the flexor muscles? Is it weak extensor muscles? Same thing in the leg, seeing which muscles are weak. Or is it just that you have a very bad diet and you have chronic inflammation causing those tendons and ligaments to become inflamed? So one of the, the three biggest reasons why people get these due to a nutritional standpoint and not just a structural standpoint is that vitamin D will helps regulate the nerves it helps regulate the muscles and without vitamin d it's also a good modulator of the immune system and without vitamin d if you're getting low amounts of vitamin d the immune system will become dysfunctional and when the immune system becomes dysfunctional 
you get autoimmune type issues. Now, autoimmune issues can present as many different things, especially if you have belching, burping, uh, stomach pain, heartburn, if you have chronic headaches, all of these are signs that there's chronic inflammation in your body and can indicate some sort of autoimmunity, even though you may not have been diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis, with uh, thyroid, uh, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, any of those, Graves' disease, Sjogren's, there's multiple that it could be. Vitamin D will help. So you need to make sure that you're getting in sunlight so that you're getting the appropriate amount of vitamin D to keep that immune system regulated. It's also very important for our hormonal function. And if you're a male and you're having low vitamin D, then what will happen typically is you'll have muscle wasting. Now, when the muscles, especially in our core and our back, aren't functioning appropriately, we get compression. We see this a lot. And when people have chronic back pain or maybe after an accident or a stressful event and their immune system is going down, or if they have some trauma to their back or a sciatica, a lot of the times what's happening is those muscles in their core and their back are weak and they have a depressed immune system leading to the aggravation causing that sciatic type pain. So vitamin D is crucial to make sure you're getting out in sunlight. We're here in South Florida, so that isn't hard for us. But if you're somewhere where there isn't a lot of sun, things that you can do. Mushrooms contain the most vitamin D out of any food source. It is not milk. I want to address that. Milk, it doesn't contain any bioavailable bio vitamin D. So if you're drinking milk thinking that you're getting your vitamin D, you've been told wrong. Just like you've been told wrong probably about other things about how fats are bad for you and how sugars and carbohydrates are the way to go. That's wrong. We're finding out that that is wrong. So other ways that you can get vitamin D are spinach is highly uh, bioavailable in vitamin D. And if you're going to supplement it, you want to make sure you're doing vitamin D with K2. K2 will help the absorption of vitamin D so that it will boost your levels up. One of the reasons why people have low vitamin D is liver congestion. So if you haven't already, go back and watch my videos on the liver and cholesterol and detoxing because this can be very important because your liver is where you make your vitamin D. So if you have liver toxicity or liver burden, then what will happen is you won't convert as much vitamin D. So it's very important that you do a detox. B12, now a lot of people are B vitamin deficient. If you're eating foods that say fortified with B vitamins or minerals, those are not bioavailable. So that's why you're still having these deficiencies even though you may be thinking that you're eating the appropriate amount. So our diet today just is very poor and at least of these vitamin deficiencies causing these chronic conditions. Vitamin B12 is very crucial for nerve function. So it helps with the growth of the myelin sheath. It also helps with immune function as well. But if the myelin sheath starts to deteriorate, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get that burning and tingling that you see in carpal tunnel syndrome, especially when uh, people are using it a lot and you're, they're using those tendons and they, those nerves are firing all the time, but they don't have enough vitamin D to help reduce the inflammation and to keep that myelin sheath nice and healthy. So vitamin B12 is crucial. There are methylated forms. So a methylcobalamin is what you're looking for when you're taking a vitamin B12 supplement, which can help, like we said, with the nerve function. This is found a lot in your red meats. Red meat is not bad for you. Just so you know, it is not bad for you. Now, if you're going to eat red meat is a really good source and then also seafood is a really good source of vitamin B12 as well. So those are two great things to add into your diet. If you're a vegan or if you choose to be a vegetarian, you need to make sure that you're supplementing with this and you're using a methylated form, especially if you don't know if you have any genetic SNPs, which could be causing you to not be able to absorb the vitamin B12. Now, vitamin B6 also super important we see a lot of our peripheral neuropathy cases that are deficient in vitamin b6 and this is a key missing factor sometimes people come in and they're doing peripheral neuropathy treatments 
and maybe they're doing electrical stem or maybe they're doing a red light therapy or maybe they're doing injections but they're missing the nutritional aspect to it which is all of these so it's all of these vitamins here that can help regulate those nerves and the inflammation and the other thing is that with vitamin b6 is that it will protect the myelin sheath just like b12 so those two go hand in hand with regenerating the myelin sheath and reducing the inflammation this is found in poultry is a good source for vitamin b6 so if you're having any type of peripheral neuropathy symptoms and you've done electrical stem you're maybe doing some light therapy probably not the right light therapy and you're also working on your diet you and you're not doing any type of supplementation you have to think about it this way if you've been deficient for so long in vitamins and minerals that you've developed the peripheral neuropathy or if you're a diabetic then you've got a slew of other issues that need to be reversed it's going to take time for this to get corrected so taking good forms of these supplements can help with your sciatic and carpal tunnel the best example that i can give is that if you're baking a cake and you have all the ingredients and you have the oven and you have the time all right the cake's going to turn out good but if you're missing one of the ingredients so if you don't put eggs in the batter and this is not a, i'm not propo or you know promoting cake by any reason but i'm just saying this is the best example or if you leave the oven on too long or too short or if you have the temperature set too high or too low, the cake's gonna come out poor. Just like when you're healing your body, if you're resolving any of these issues, you have to have the perfect conditions, all the right ingredients and the right amount of time in order to see results. A lot of people get caught up and they think that they're gonna see results very fast. With our peripheral neuropathy cases, they can go from anywhere from six months up to 18 months, depending on how much degeneration there has. And when you get past 80% degenerated nerve function, there's no reversing it. That looks like permanent nerve loss. This is when people end up in wheelchairs. This is when people end up with amputations. And I've seen those happen. So not to be a bearer of bad news, but I want you all to take these seriously so that you can have the highest quality of life as possible. Thank you so much for watching this. Please like and share with your friends and family, whoever. Make sure to go watch some of my other videos about cholesterol, different types of diets versus keto, and then also any type of carnivore diet, and avoid sugars at all costs. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'm here to help, and have a great day. Bye-bye.